In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create three text to shape animation presets that you can incorporate into your projects. These presets will save you a ton of time while animating each character individually. Check out the links in the description below for the project file, presets, and ways that you can support 7 minute AE tutorials. Your support is greatly appreciated and necessary for keeping this channel alive. Okay, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. In this tutorial, I'm gonna create three different kinds of animation that we can use over and over again. We're gonna bring the first letter in from the left, the second one in from the right, and then the third one we're gonna scale up from the middle. So let's go ahead and right click on our text layer and then choose create, and then let's select create shapes from text. Okay, and now notice that our text gets hidden and all we have is our shape layer here and each letter comes within its own group. And this is gonna be true for any time you create shapes from text. Now I'm just gonna push in here because we need to pay attention to where our anchor point is. That's one of the most important things with this technique. So if we select this A group and then press Y, it will bring up our pan behind tool. And as you can see, the anchor point for this shape group defaults to the middle bottom of all of these letters. If you click the B, you'll see our anchor point is this right here. And C, also anchor point is right here. So let's focus on this A first with our anchor point in the middle of this text. If we open that up, go down to our transform. This is where we'll be doing all of our changes and making all of our adjustments. So now if we adjust our anchor point on the X value, you can see that it's gonna move your letter. Instead of moving the anchor point, it moves the letter. One of the things you can do is move the middle of your letter to the anchor point. And as you can see, this is a value of negative, we'll say 200. To get it back to its original position, you can also change the position to the same value. So negative 200. And as we can see, if we select our A group, our anchor point now is in the middle of our letter. However, this can become really tedious to do this every single time. So I'm gonna zero that out and I'm gonna show you the technique I've come up with. So let's take our position and let's just pick whip that to our anchor point. Now remember, our anchor point is right here in the middle. So now if we adjust our anchor point's values, it will move our anchor point instead of moving the letter, which makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna show you why that's important. So say, what if we want to adjust our scale? So if we adjust it, vertically, there's no issue. However, if we want to adjust it horizontally, as we can see, it's adjusting from our anchor points location, which is right here. So let's move that back over to the middle of our A there, and now we can adjust this horizontally and vertically, and it adjusts from the right location, and it stays there. But one of the problems that this poses is that now we can't adjust our position value, but there is a solution to that. Let's take a look at our position expression. This line of code is referencing our group A, so that's the content A, and it's transform anchor point. So if we just type in value plus at the beginning of it, this will now allow us to move our position and our anchor point will stay in the same place. So see if we adjust our anchor point, like right there, for example, now move our position, we can see that our anchor point stays there. And that's really important for some of the animations that we wanna do. I wanna animate our A in from the left. Go back to the beginning of our layer here. Let's put a keyframe for position. I'm gonna shift page down once to go forward 10 frames. I'm gonna put another keyframe. Then at that same location, I'm gonna put a keyframe for rotation. Shift page down again to go forward 10 frames and another keyframe. A lot of times I like to set up my keyframes before I change my values. There's no change in value. I've just created keyframes for where I want this animation to take place. So first let's move our position over to the left. So that way it's gonna come in like that. For our rotation, we want it to start off, we'll say maybe 20 degrees. And as we can see, it's rotating from the center point of this letter because that's where we've put our anchor point. So for something like this, I actually want my anchor point to be over to the far right. So I'm gonna take this anchor point and as you can see, it's moving right here and just place that in the far right corner like that. And now if we watch it animate in, we can see it's going to be tilting on the far right hand side. So this animation doesn't look great, but we can make some adjustments to our keyframes to get the look that we want. So you just highlight all of these keyframes and F9 to make those easy ease. Okay, so let's select the second keyframe on our position, go to our graph editor, pull the handle all the way to the left, then select our first rotation keyframe. Again, go back to our graph editor, pull that handle all the way to the right. If we watch that play back, that's the kind of movement that we're wanting. However, we do not want it to be visible from the start of the animation, so that's just a very quick opacity animation. 
So I would separate these by maybe two or three frames, the first keyframe being zero, the second one being 100, select those, and again, F9. So if we watch that animate in, we get that. Okay, and now we can save this as an animation preset that we're gonna be using later on. So what you wanna select is the anchor point, position, rotation, and opacity. So basically everything that we made adjustments to. Whenever we reapply this, you'll have to make two changes. You'll have to adjust your anchor point value and also change this letter with content. Right now, this is referencing our A letter, but say if you apply this later on to a different letter, all you have to do is change the letter it's referencing so that way it will line up. That will all make sense very soon. So for right now, let's just go ahead and select these properties, anchor point, position, rotation, and opacity. Go up to animation, save animation preset. This is going to go into your documents, Adobe, the version you're using. I'm in 2023, user presets, and I'm going to put this in this folder that says 7 minute AE. And I'm just going to call this text dash shapes underscore from left. You can name this whatever you want, whatever is easiest for you to remember. So like save. So now let's move down and do this for our other letters. I'm going to go ahead and hide our A and our C so that way we can just focus on our B letter here. So now let's open up our B group. And again, we'll be making adjustments to our transform. I'm going to push in here, select Y. And as you can see, our anchor point is right here. So we want to move that over. But again, if we just move our anchor point, it's going to move our letter. So we want to take our position, pick whip that up to anchor point, And now we can move our anchor point like this. This will be animating in from the right. So I want this anchor point to be on the far left right here. And again, we need to open up our position and then just add value plus to the beginning of this expression. So now we can adjust our position value. Okay, so let's animate that in the same way we did our A letter, but coming in from the opposite direction. So a keyframe for position, shift page down once to go forward 10 frames, another keyframe, keyframe for rotation, shift page down once to go forward another 10, and we'll put that keyframe right there. We want our position to come in from the right, so something like that. And then we want this rotation, this time to be negative 20, so that way it's gonna tilt from the far left side of this letter, and then settle like that. Again, select these keyframes, F9 to make those easy E's. We're gonna take our second position keyframe and pull that handle to the left, select our first rotation keyframe, and then pull that handle to the right. So what we get is this comes in fast, kind of hangs, and then it drops. And then again, let's just take our opacity, make that value zero, go forward a couple of frames, increase that to 100. And this is the animation that we get. Now you may want to move this over more to the right, just depending on the kind of look that you're going for, like that. Okay, and again, let's select anchor point, position, rotation, opacity, animation, save animation preset, and since we've already saved one preset, it will bring us right back to the folder where we just saved this other one to. Remember, we named this text shapes from left. So I'm just going to select that so that way it brings up the same name. And all I have to do is change this from left to right. Select save and let that save. And then for this last animation, for the RC letter, I'm going to make this a scaling animation. So let's go back to the beginning of our layer here, open up our transform properties, select the group and then select Y. And you can see our anchor point is way over here. So let's go ahead and take our position, parent it up to our anchor point, and then we can adjust our anchor point value to put that right in the center of our letter right here. And again, we need to open up our position, add value plus to the beginning of that, and now we can adjust our position. So for this animation, we'll be adjusting our position and scale. So I'm gonna put a keyframe for both of those values at the beginning. Now shift page down once to go forward 10 frames and then add in keyframes for both position and scale. Shift page down to go forward 10 frames and again, keyframes for position and scale. This point, I'm going to page down one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna add in a keyframe for scale. I'm gonna do this two more times. So one, two, three, four, five and keyframe and one, two, three, four, five, and another keyframe. So select all the keyframes other than the first set, F9 to make those easy E's. Now let's change these values. First thing we need to do is unconstrain our scale here. We want this first value on our scale for the Y value to be zero. So 100, zero, that's gonna squash it down like that. For our second one, we want to increase this, we'll say to 115. So it stretches and then also move our position so it goes up in the air like that. When we come back here, our position is already set because we haven't made an adjustment on this keyframe. But now we need to add in some animation principles. 
Since we stretched it 115%, we need to go in the opposite direction when it lands, but it needs to be a value that's less than 15. We'll make that 10. So 100 minus 10 is 90. Then we want to bounce this up a little bit. So for this next one, we'll make this 107. Coming back down the other direction, maybe we'll make this 96. And then this will settle at 100. So what we get is this. So that kind of a movement. Okay, now to get the right kind of animation, let's select the second set of keyframes, open up our graph editor, and then just pull these handles away from these keyframes like that. So what we get is this. Now you can make some adjustments if you want the bounce to be a little bit different. You can exaggerate these values more. Maybe you want to make this 120 instead of 115, and then kind of adjust this. So instead of 90, we'll maybe make this 85. Instead of 107, maybe 110. And then instead of 96, maybe 95, you know, just make some adjustments like that. So you get maybe a little bit more of an exaggerated bounce. You can also spread these keyframes out differently to get the bounce to happen at a different speed. So that looks really good like that. Okay, so now let's just select our position and scale. Go up to animation, save animation preset. Again, this is going to bring us back to the folder we saved our other presets to. So I'm just going to... Open this up a little bit so we can see the names. Select either one of these, and this time we're gonna say text-shape, and we'll say scale. So that way we know that we're animating our scale. Click Save. Okay, so now we have all of these different animations here. So now if we select a layer, press U to bring up our keyframes. So now if we watch this playback, we can see the kind of animation that we have. Now what I would do at this point is maybe grab these sets of keyframes for each letter and spread them out not necessarily in order, so that way it has some randomness to it. So you get something like that. Okay, so now how does this apply to other words that we create in the future? I'm going to get rid of that shape layer, turn our text layer back on, and this time I'm going to change this to Jeff. Okay, so now I want to apply those shape layer text presets that we already created to these letters. So first, let's right click on our word, go to create, create shapes from text. So that way we get our shapes. We open that up, we see we have all of our groups here. So I'm gonna show you now how to apply this to new letters first and kind of go over the logic of how we do it. Then I'm gonna show you how to quickly apply this to any word. So let's go over to our animation presets and our effects and presets panel. Then we're looking for user presets. And remember, I saved this under my seven minute AE folder. And here are our presets right there. We have from left, from right, and scale. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out how I want these letters to animate in. So I'm gonna select my J group, press Y to bring up my pan behind tool. And as you can see, the anchor point for this shape group is in the center. And that's gonna be true for each one of these letters. So I think for my J group, I wanna scale this up. For my E group, I want it to come in from the left. For this first F, I want to come in from the right, and for this last F, I want this to scale up. So let's select our J group, open that up, go to our transform, and remember we want to scale this up. So the way to do this is to select your transform properties and then just apply whatever preset you want. So I'm going to double click scale. We get an error because we do have to make some changes. First thing we have to do is open up our expression here. We have to change our C to J, so that way it applies to our J group. So now the error disappears, but it's not quite lined up perfectly. So if we go to our anchor point, all we can have to do now is move our anchor point, you can see it right here, to the middle of our J right there, and now this scales up just like that. Now I want to do the same thing to the F group. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that whenever you have groups that have the same letter, you have to name one of them slightly differently because the expression won't know which F, for example, to apply the expression to. So if we open up our F group, Select Transform, and again, I wanna scale this up. This is our second F, so I'm gonna double click that. And then we open up our position here. If I just change this letter C to F, After Effects doesn't know if I'm referring to this F or this F. So I always like to change the second letter to maybe something like F2. So now we can change our expression here to F2, and it will apply to that F. If we go beyond our keyframes, so that way we can adjust our anchor point. As we can see, it's right here. Just pull your anchor point over to the center of the letter where you want to animate in from. And now we have J and F, both animating in by scale. So now let's animate our E coming in from the left. So if we open that up, choose Transform Properties for E, and we want to animate in from the left right here. So double click that, open up our Transform Properties, 
first thing we want to do is change our letter here from A to E. So that way it refers to our E group. Go past our keyframes and let's just adjust our anchor point. So we want our anchor point to be at the far right side of the letter. So press Y to bring up your pan behind tool. And then let's just move our anchor point. I'm going to push in here so you can see it better. Here's our anchor point right here. We put that right there on the far right corner. If we watch that play back, we can see how it comes in like that. So now we just need to animate in this first F. Open up our F group. Again, select Transform. I'm going to come in from right. So double click that. Open up position. I'm going to change B to F like that. And again, go past our keyframes. And then I'm going to push in here so you can see our anchor point. We want to position that to the far left of this letter right here. So let's select our layer, press U. And if you hold down Shift and forward slash, it will fit your comp to your viewer. And now I'm just going to watch this play back. And we can see we have all of our animation. And again, what I would do is move these around not necessarily in order, so that way you get something that's a little bit more creative. Maybe something like this. Okay, so now we went through that one step at a time very slowly. Now I'm gonna show you just how quick this process actually is. So let's get rid of that shape layer. I'm gonna change this word to animate. We're going to apply these presets to each of these letters, and I'm gonna show you how fast we can do that. Right click, create shapes from text. We open up our groups here. We have all of our letters here. So now I have two A's, so I want to make the second A group A2. Out of the gate, I know I want to animate A, N, and M from the left. So I'm going to take A, N, and M, animate that in from the left, like that. Now I want to animate my I and my T scaled animations. So double click that. And now all we have left is our A and our E. So we're going to select A2 and E, and we want that to come in from the right. So. That's how we're going to start it off. Now just hit EE -E to bring up your, all of your expressions. And all we have to do now is just change these letters. Our A will stay the same, but we're going to change this to N. Change this one to I. Change this one to M. Change this one to A2. Change this to T. And then change our last one to E. So that way all of these will now align up with the corresponding groups. Now, if we select that layer and press U, we want to go beyond all of our keyframes. So that way we can set our anchor point. So now with this layer selected, just type anchor and all your anchor points will come up. So we want our A anchor point to be at the far right of our letter. So here's our anchor point right there. We're going to put it at the far right, which is right here. Same thing for our N. We're going to move that over. So it's the far right right here. For our I group, let's close these up. We want that to be in the middle of our letter, so that way it animates in from the middle bottom. Okay, M came in from the left, so we're going to move that over, so it's the far right, right here. A came in from the right, so our A2 group, let's just move our anchor point, you can see it right here, to the far left of our letter. T is going to be from the middle because we're using a scale animation. And then for our E, that also comes in from the right, so just adjust our anchor point value so it's at the far left of our e right here so again shift forward slash to bring that back i'm going to select u to bring up all of our keyframes and just watch it play back from here you can see everything animates in the way that we want it to but now we can offset these so that way they come in randomly so i'm just going to kind of pull these around one of the things i like to do is definitely not make my first letter come in first and not make my last letter come in last so that way it's just a bit more random you can spread these out in any way that you want to get the look that you want you can apply these three presets to any letter that you create shapes from text, and it will drastically speed up your process and will give you great animations each time. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful and if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I hope this tutorial helped you out and that you learned something new and useful. Make sure to come back next time for another tutorial that will expand your knowledge of After Effects while also teaching you some really cool tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Support our channel by getting your 7-Minute AE merch today at our online store. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, is guaranteed to make you a Shape Layer Rockstar. The link to that course, to our 7-Minute AE store, and the project files for this episode are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.